welcome to uh, Our Powers Day of Action, uh, co-hosted by the Sierra Club and Maine Climate Action Now. We're super excited to have you all here. Um, maybe folks from Sierra Club can give us a quick wave. Um, and folks from MCAN, um, we're really excited to ha have y'all. Um, just for all of your awareness, um, this um, you've all been placed on mute uh, for the time being, and you'll have an opportunity to unmute yourself and get a little bit more interactive uh, in some of the uh, coming uh, breakout rooms that we're going to sort y'all into. Um, and just for your awareness, this uh, event is being recorded and will be uh, posted on some of our social media networks following. So thank you all for, for participating. We're excited to have you. Um, my name is Andrew Blunt. I will be your MC for, for this evening. Um, I am the organizing director with Our Power and am super excited to uh, kick things off with such a great event, great group of people. Um, so I'll just say that we are um, really excited that all of you are here to you know, deepen your involvement in the fight for consumer owned utility in Maine. Um, now really is the time to get active and let decision makers and members of your community know that consumer ownership is the way forward for Maine's utilities. And we've got an absolutely fantastic lineup here tonight. Um, we've got a few policymakers, folks from Augusta, a few members of the environmental activist community, some artists. We're excited to kind of broaden our, our message and show you why uh, consumer owned is the, is the way forward. Um, so first off, I'd just like to introduce our first speaker, is Representative Seth Berry of Bodenham. He's been working to bring our utilities into alignment with Maine's priorities for years now and is a proud sponsor of our bill um, in Augusta this session to establish the Pine Tree Power Company. Uh, it's great to have him with us here tonight and uh, kick off our event. Seth, you can take it away. Great, thank you so much, Andrew. And it is great to see you all. What a fantastic group. I see a lot of familiar faces, many of you um, who have uh, been on this journey for some time now as well, and others who are new. Um, and uh, I think this, this growing uh, movement that we call Our Power um, is frankly just getting started. Uh, we are, I'm, I'm sensing a, a huge, huge upsurge of momentum. Um, certainly felt it yesterday uh, when we uh, declared our independence on uh, uh, the, I believe it was the 246th anniversary of the, uh, the battle at Lexington and Concord when um, a, a, a group in, in this neck of the woods declared independence from a, a foreign colonial power. And uh, we, we similarly declared our independence yesterday with a group of bipartisan co-sponsors, uh, Senator Rick Bennett, former Republican State Senate President, uh, myself, uh, Representative Grahowski, who you'll be hearing from later, who's from Ellsworth, uh, also a Republican, a new Re Republican representative, uh, Nathan Carlo from down in Buxton, and the four of us, two Republicans, two Democrats, and, and others um, stood together and uh, announced the bill, an act to create the Pine Tree Power Company, um, which you all will be testifying on, as I understand it. And we are very excited about that because uh, testimony and other forms of direct outreach to elected officials is going to be absolutely critical in this endeavor. And of course, when you write testimony, you can also pretty easily turn that into a letter to the editor or an op-ed. Um, you can send it to the governor. Uh, you can send it to other influential people who you may know of uh, in your area. So, you know, once you've really written your own your own pitch uh, for this bill and and thought it through, you 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 not only understand it more deeply or are more able to to articulate it, uh, but you really become a, a powerful voice uh, for this effort. And that's what we need. We need all of your voices uh, to make this happen because the only way that any good change, any big change ever does happen. So um, why is the, the Our Power Movement important? Um, I think all of you um, have some sense of this, but just in case it's not abundantly clear, um, we are really focused on being the first state in the nation 
to get to net zero and to do so in a just an equitable and affordable way. We are also focused on being uh, the first rural state to get to universal, affordable, equitable broadband because those two things are related. Um, the power utilities currently uh, use broadband uh, right now. They have fiber optic lines all over the state and they use them for their own purposes, but they don't share them. And there's a lot of dark fiber that could be lit up uh, in, in that respect. They own the poles, which are a critical um, piece and a, and a critical cross driver, a critical cause of delays uh, for our competitive internet service providers when they're trying to get uh, fiber optic lines on the poles. So these two things are related. <clears throat> but uh, being the first state to get to net zero and to do so equitably and affordably is our, our primary focus. Uh, we understand that the monopoly electric utilities have a stranglehold on our clean energy future. We understand that they are literally what stands between us and renewable power for our electric vehicle or renewable power for our new electric efficient electric heat pump or heat pump water heater um, or even perhaps um, a, a new electrical um, engine for our factory. Um, these are the things that we need to plug into if we're going to decarbonize. Uh, transportation is 54% of our state's overall emissions. Uh, building heating and cooling is 30% of our overall state emissions. And industrial processes are 9% of our emissions. Electricity right now is only 7% um, because we do have a lot of renewable energy in Maine. Um, and, and a lot of our, when you, you know, when you flip a switch, a lot of it is electric, uh, is renewable. But the utilities see an opportunity in, in having that monopoly stranglehold. They understand that there are billions and billions of dollars in profits for them. Um, and that is why you, know, you see um, this, this uh, globalization, this consolidation in the utility industry at this time, um, in, in, you know, not just in Maine, but all over the world. Um, CMP is not CMP now. It is Avantgrid, which in turn is Iberdrola, which in turn is big banks and the, the countries, the foreign governments of Qatar, Norway and Spain. Those are those are the folks who are, you know, actually driving the decisions. And you know, they're they're, they're not necessarily bad people. They're just they don't care about Maine, and they're in it because you know, as a business proposition to to maximize profit. And that leads to bad decisions that are hurtful when they come down on the ground in our communities. Those are those are decisions that are that are very very um, uh, inequitable that are very, very uh, damaging to our ability to drive our clean energy uh, uh, economy forward and to exercise moral leadership in the world. You know, Maine has this opportunity by uh, taking control of our energy destiny um, to exercise a, a moral leadership for the United States and in turn for the world. If we are the first state to make an equitable and just and affordable transition, then we will show the way for others. Just as you know, we are inspired in turn by the six communities in the in the nation that got to 100% renewable electricity first. I think of Georgetown, Texas, uh, Rockport, Missouri, um, Greensburg, Kansas, Aspen, Colorado, Burlington, Vermont, and Kodiak, Alaska. Four of the six conservative communities. They have very little in common except they're all served by consumer owned utilities. And those are the six that made it there first, that got to 100% renewable electricity. That's what we're trying to do on a statewide basis. And we can do that with your help. Um, uh, larger utilities like the Sacramento Municipal Utility District out in California, serving more people than live in the entire state of Maine, 1.5 million customers, directly elected board, the same access to low cost capital that Pine Tree Power Company will have. They plan to get to 100% renewable electricity by 2030. That is 20 years before Maine. And you know what? Um, if they can do it there with their high rates, with their restructured economy, very similar to, to our uh, uh, regulation approach, then we can do it too. Um, I was just on the phone actually uh, the other day, Representative Grahowski uh, was as well with one of the board members out there. She is directly elected by the people in her part of the, uh, I believe Tri-County area in California that serves uh, Sacramento Municipal Utility District. Um, they have taught us so much and uh, we're going to continue to learn from their example as well. We've learned also from the examples of, um, 
you know, Winter Park, Florida, Jefferson County, Washington, even Long Island, um, which is a much bigger utility that, uh, in terms of customers and load than all of Maine. They too have made this transition to consumer ownership. Um, it has, in, in the case of those smaller utilities, been absolutely brilliant. They have uh, improved reliability, reduced rates, improved their, uh, their rate of adoption of renewables and beneficial electrification. Um, Long Island has had some struggles, but you know what? They dropped rates by 20%, and that's a pretty big deal if you're trying to get people to plug into EVs and heat pumps. Um, you know, cost matters. We have one of the highest um, energy poverty levels in the country. And the average Mainer who is, um, you know, earning minimum wage, maybe supporting a couple of kids, maybe a single parent, um, she's spending a quarter of her income right now on energy. And most of that, unfortunately, is going to fossil fuels. It's going to gasoline for their family car. It's going to oil for their furnace. Uh, but if we're going to, to convert everyone, including those who are most vulnerable, those who are most at the margins, um, to renewables, then we need to make sure that it is done affordably for them. And this proposal will save us $9 billion, that's billion with a B, over the first 30 years alone. It will improve our reliability so the lights are on and so the heat pump is on in the middle of winter. And so the refrigerator is on that's, that's keeping your grandmother's you know, uh, medications cold and, uh, and keeping the food from spoiling. Um, you know, these are the, the kinds of things that we need to think about if we're going to an all electric economy. CMP and Versen cannot continue to have a stranglehold on the monopoly delivery of the, the, the only energy that we're all going to really be, be looking towards in the future. That is not an acceptable scenario by, by any standard. I think Republicans um, understand this as well from a sovereignty perspective. They understand that local control is better. They understand that reliability is better and they understand that cost is important. So if we can appeal to folks on those on those terms, you know, just like uh, just like our logo says, local, low cost, renewable. These are things. Excuse me, local, low cost, and reliable. Um, these are things that, that we can all care about. You know, some some folks might might care about renewable. Some some maybe less so, but local, low cost, reliable. These things matter a great deal, and that's why on our website, ourpowermain.org, you see. A lot of uh, a lot of emphasis on those um, talking points. Um, we need to emphasize that this is a utility that is uh, from outside of state governments. It will be set up just like our existing consumer and utilities in Maine. We have nine of them. Um, they are they are outside of state government. They operate offer operate independently without the use of tax dollars, without the use of state bonds. Um, this is not a state takeover. This is not government run. Yes, we're going to elect a board but it will be a not-for-profit independent corporation called the, main, the Pine Tree Power Company. And so the way we talk about this matters if we're going to convince everyone in the whole state and bring everyone along. I think we all have diff, you know, uh, a lot of um, environmental values here, a lot of progressive values on this call, but we need to make sure that we're appealing to everyone in order to get this done. And, and we're convinced that we can do that um, because we've, we've done it already. You know, we, we, we have a great bipartisan coalition um, I, I'm sure you saw some of the news coverage yesterday. Uh, we're very excited about how that went and about the momentum that we have so far. Um, you're going to help us to, to bring this thing across the finish line and to convince the governor and legislators to get the job done and support this bill now in the legislature uh, by June. We want to we want to have a vote by the end of June, and that's that's now. So we're looking at a a, a public hearing as soon as um, late April, it could be the 29th of April, I think, but more likely will be the first week in May or so. Um, it gives you a little more time. I know we had talked about the 22nd, but um, you know, I, I, in college, I always ask for an extension and, I'm, and now I'm giving you an extension on your, on your homework assignment to do your testimony. Um, so it gives us all a little more time to get ready and uh, we, we, but we will hold the hearing soon. And so a big part of today is getting ready for that. I'm uh, thrilled to be with you. Thank you all for joining us. And um, I'll, I'll stop there, but it uh, looks like we have a great evening planned for um, talking about how best to advocate, um, how to use your voice and a lot of experience as well um, on these Zoom screens uh, that can share uh, great ideas about how to do that. So uh, back to you, Andrew, or whoever's up next. Yeah, great. Thank you, Seth. I think that was a fantastic intro. And 
you're a hundred percent on the mark that, you know, making a COU a reality in Maine relies on the voices of, of all of you here today. Um, it, and the voices of other Mainers across the state. And I'm really glad that Seth brought up our, our website, ourpowermain.org um, is a great source of resources, a great resource in terms of uh, what you can do to get involved uh, and will consistently be a good source of news updates um, on where you can plug in and um, get the information that you need to advocate for, for this change. Um, so with that, we are going to shift gears a little bit to why you all came here tonight um, to take action. Uh, so in that regard, we've got two youth-led breakout rooms tonight for you to choose from uh, to help you amplify the conversation around Our Power's efforts to establish consumer owned utility. Um, the first will be by calling or emailing legislators. And the second breakout room will be dedicated to uh, how to write letters to the editor or write an op-ed to your local paper. Um, so our facilitators are going to provide you all with basic guidance and gives you the tools that you need to, to make, uh, to take these actions um, either tonight or in the near future and bring your involvement uh, in this fight to, to the next level. Um, they are also great. Welcome back everyone. Hope that Hope that y'all had a good time and learned something about um, what it means to take um, concrete action steps to either you know, build community support or build support in the legislature um, or perhaps with the governor about um, how to build support in those places for uh, the COU. This, um, so now we'd like to, uh, well, actually, before before we move on, I think I, I speak for all of us at, at Our Power when I say that it's very important to, to start these conversations and to build these relationships and to keep the conversation moving, right? Um, so really maintaining um, the connections that you make with your with your legislator um, to help build support for, for this bill and other important initiatives um, that you might come across. The, these relationships are, are really valuable and really are what helps to, to build our movement and others like it. So um, becoming a community champion in that way um, will really help, uh, help our cause. It's great. Um, so next up is uh, Emily Roqueford. Um, she's a student at Unity College, an employee at Revision Solar, and a youth climate activist who has uh, really committed herself to Maine's energy future. Um, she's gonna give us a couple words on why a COU is important to her. Go ahead, Emily. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. So it is really good to see everyone here and everyone that came out and are ready to take action. Um, and it's really good to see a lot of young faces as well. So young people or youth generally make up about 20% of the global population, um, but they're 100% of the future. So I think that's really powerful, um, especially that you all are taking action because this is your future. And a lot of us, you know, we're already seeing the effects of climate change today. Um, we're all here because we believe that that's a really powerful issue that's affecting our lives and the lives of the next generation. Um, and that can be really depressing. <laughs> it can be also very easy to kind of focus on those negative aspects, to look at all the hurt that's happening in the world, to look at these issues of injustice, both climate injustice and social injustice, um, and really just kind of dwell on the negative things in the world. Um, but there's a lot that we can do with that and we can take that instead of just dwelling with it, um, we can do something about that and turn that into passion and into action. Um, so I think especially, you know, just looking at the energy economy in Maine, we want it to be cleaner and that's for an environment. We want it to be just, we want to, you know, speak to everyone, not just those who can afford to put, you know, expensive solar on their roof because it's not for everyone right now. Um, and a way that we can do that is with the consumer owned utility. You know, as Seth kind of mentioned earlier, you know, all these places that aren't the richest places in the world, they've reached 100% renewable energy. And they've done that through consumer owned utilities. Um, so this is a proven, it's a clear way that we can take action and we can make change 
physical change in our world that affects people and it affects the environment, you know, and doing it in a way that's economically accessible for everyone. Um, so yeah, taking action like you all just learned about and, you know, these breakout rooms, talking to your legislators, um, like Andrew just mentioned, really forming a relationship with them as well, not just letting this be a one-time thing for consumer and utilities. And while that's important, moving forward with that as well and kind of pushing them and holding them accountable to this passion and the change that you want to see in the future. So that's definitely something, you know, building those relationships writing letters to the editors and writing op-eds, using your voice. Every single person in this call right now has a unique story and you all have different aspects of your life and experiences that you can really pull and kind of make that meaningful message your own. So I think really just not being afraid to take that step into passion and use you know, whatever is frustrating you, whatever is driving you to be here today to take action and make something happen. So back to you, Andrew. Thank you so much, Emily. That is absolutely right. Um, well, I particularly liked what you said about um, you know caring, caring for members of our community and how this issue is about. It's about our communities. It's about local control, and it's about putting uh, how we power our future into our own hands. Um, so now we're going to shift a little to the uh, the creative side. I think we can all get behind um, the intersections between uh, art and protest through history. And we have a really excellent clip from a main based dance group, many of whose members are um, youth and um, adult uh, climate activists in their own right. Um, and so they've provided us with an amazing performance um, that I hope you all enjoy. Matt, you want to go ahead and cue that up? Great. Yep. Hold on one second, sorry. Oh, I got to do it one more time. become dancers, artists, creators, gardeners, the future change makers. I find happiness in my imagination and spending time with my family and friends. Uh, to me, happiness is unity, connections, and community. To me, happiness is waking up in the morning with the desire to make a change and make people happy, because that makes me happy. Dancing, Dancing makes, makes us happy. happy. Making other people laugh makes me happy and laughing, but not laughing at other people. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh there we go it was muted there thank you so much to Nevea for that performance um yes <laughs> round of applause 
worthwhile. Um, so I think that message to Joy at the end there really speaks to um, speaks to why we're engaging in this work, you know, uplifting our communities, building a better future together. Um, and next up to speak a little bit to that um, is Jess Cooper, a youth climate activist based in Western Maine and a member of that dance group that we just saw who can offer us a piece of spoken word poetry. Take it away, Jess. Awesome, thanks, Andrew. Uh, yeah, before I uh, gave a little bit on this spoken word, I just wanted to um, say yes. Thank you so much for addressing how creativity intersects with climate change. Creativity and art and artivism can really make a difference. Um, so yeah, that was a really fun video to, to take part in and to dance in. Um, this, this has been a learning experience for me writing this um, short spoken word piece because I think it's really taught me more about the consumer owned utility as I wrote it and thought about it and thought about how it applied to my life. Um, so yeah, I hope that it can, can do the same for you a little bit. When we listen to the wisdom of the indigenous peoples of this land, we are reminded of the ways that we can work hand in hand with nature, each other, our friends and neighbors close by. So why? Why is it that we have turned this blind eye to how disconnected our connection is to the grid on which we all rely? Transmission lines lace the sky and hum with power and a reminder that this energy doesn't necessarily come from nearby. When we pay more for something we all use to the profit and into the pockets of companies overseen overseas, we lose and so much more than just money. We can choose a consumer owned utility and relabel ourselves as a community powered on resiliency. With our power, we can break free from an outdated system that we no longer need. One that feeds the greed that squeezes every dollar from folks like you and me, just trying to make ends meet and our planet a better place to be. Until you've had your light shut off because the cost was just too much, you can't imagine choosing between paying for your bills or for your child's lunch. So what do we do? Well, this idea isn't new. A COU, a utility, a useful thing that's used and owned by you, the consumer, the member, and the owner too. Here's your chance to stand in your power, to stand up and choose a clean energy future, shining a light for the way through to Maine's liberation from for-profit utilities long overdue. It will require all of us from York to Oxford to Piscataquis to tell our stories, to build back better and with equity. We're here today calling on the 16 counties to join together to make ripples and waves sending our energy to every part of the state. There's a saying that Maine feels like one big small town. Well, if we're looking to all stay connected, this is a sure way how. Make some noise for our power and let us take action here and now. Thank you. Awesome, Jess. Oh. Wow. Thank you, Jess. That was amazing. amazing. That was really amazing. I had shivers. Um, yeah, that's just spoke so well to the principles of, of justice and, and unity that we're, that we're really pushing for here with this proposal. And I, yeah, I'm a bit speechless. Thank you. Um, wow. Next up uh, is our uh, another co-sponsor of the bill that we have in the legislature to push for the Pine Tree Power Company. Um, Rep. Nicole Grahoski of Ellsworth has been a champion of utility reform in Augusta this session um, and is going to speak to us about um, what it means to be a member of the community, a citizen advocate uh, in public hearing and how getting involved through testifying is a really good way to make your voice heard. Go ahead, Nicole. Thank you so much. It is um, such an honor to be here with you all. You have so many other places you could be, but you chose to be here with us. And it's so hard to follow such beautiful 
um, art. I felt like I was already so passionate about this project, researching it for a couple of years now. And that just moved me to <laughs> double down on my own efforts. So I hope you feel the same way. And thank you to everyone for being a part of this. Um, so as Andrew mentioned, we'd love to encourage you um, to come and be a part of our public hearing, to come and testify um, about the importance of this legislation. It is so important that the voices of real people, um, our future, as we heard from Emily, of our youth, of the folks that have seen how we got here to come and share your stories, because we have a, a tough battle ahead of us, to be honest. CMP and Verson are out there every day um, spinning their own versions of this story, telling you this is going to be a government takeover and it's scary. It's going to cost a gazillion dollars. Um, numbers that I don't even know where they come from. They're not numbers they pay taxes on to us, that's for sure. Um, so we really, really just need everybody's voices to overpower them, to take back our power and say, we're here, we're speaking the truth, and this is such an important effort. Um, I don't want to go into too many details about what that might look like, because I know that um, we're going to have a, a separate breakout session to talk about this, but I really would encourage you, if you've never done it before, um, this is a, hopefully an easier year to participate. You don't have to drive hours and wait in long lines to come testify. You all obviously know how to use Zoom. That's how we're testifying this year, so you can use that skill to be a part of our action on the day of the public hearing. Um, as Representative Barry mentioned, uh, hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, but I encourage you to, to participate. I myself had never been to the State House, and a couple of years ago, I testified about ranked choice voting because I felt very passionate that that was a, a, an important democracy reform. And one thing led to another, and people nudged me and said, Hey, you seem to care about our future. Why don't you run for office? So here I am. Um, you just never know what can happen. Don't let that scare you off from coming and participating. Uh, you don't have to run for office just because you uh, came and participated in a public hearing, but it can be such a, an eye-opening and welcoming experience. So I really hope that you'll consider joining. And if you can stick around for the next 10 minutes, we'll have um, some breakout sessions to help you prepare for that uh, exciting adventure of having your voice heard to the people who represent you. You know, it is their job, it is our job to listen to you. So you need to come and speak to us. Otherwise, uh, it's the high paid lobbyists. As uh, Rep. Barry told me when I, when I got on the Energy Utilities and Technology Committee, um, everybody there has shiny shoes. Uh, they're very fancy people. They're paid a lot of money. They fly here from all over the country to tell us that they know better, that their way is the best way. And you all know that that's not true. So we need all of your your dancing shoes and your clogs and your Birkenstocks and whatever coat, your slippers. I'm in my slippers every day in public hearings. Uh, bring those shoes and let's get to work. <laughs> yeah, here, you can hold up our shoes. <laughs> Shiny shoes don't matter anymore in this day and age. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Nicole. That is absolutely right. I, I for one, am, am barefoot at the moment, so I hope I don't need fancy <laughs> shoes to come to the EUT committee, and I don't think any of you do either. Um, <laughs> we are now going to break off into two breakout rooms where, uh, for those of you interested in, in testifying, um, you can speak to either uh, Rep. Seth Berry or Rep. Nicole Grahowski and uh, ask some questions about what it's like to testify and get some guidance on your own testimony and how to share stories as a concerned citizen in support of the COU. Uh, well, I just wanted to bring everyone back in the, in the room. I know we're a few minutes over, but just to give one last round of thanks to all of you for, for coming out. It was great to see how many people showed up to, to learn a little bit more about and take action for the fight for consumer edge utility and the fight for Pine Tree Power Company in Maine. Um, and like I said before, now is really the time to get active in our communities, to educate folks on the issue and to spread the word that consumer ownership is the way forward, the way to power our future. Um, so a huge thanks to, to everyone here. Um, a special thanks to folks at MCAN and at Sierra Club Maine, uh, who've been great uh, co-sponsors and please stay in touch. 
Um, I just put a link to our take action page in the chat. Um, you can subscribe to our action alerts, find links to our social media. Um, and that's how you're really gonna hear um, the, the newest news that our power has to offer. Um, that's how we'll be communicating about the public hearing. It's how we'll be um, letting you know uh, really what's what in the fight for a consumer and utility. So like I said, please stay in touch and uh, feel free to uh, leave me an email. I'm popping that in the chat as well. If you have any, any questions or would like to follow up about anything you heard tonight, um, always happy to chat with people. Thanks a lot. Have a, have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all.